Okay, hello everybody. So gradient descent is used in machine learning. Gradient ascent is basically the same thing, but in the opposite direction. What are they? The gradient tells us how to move in the input space. Where should we move our input in order to increase or decrease the function value, the output of the function? So we need to understand that. So remember, the gradient only exists if the output space is a real number. And that means we can visualize the input space. So the, the input, let's say the input space was R2. And let's say we're at a point P. It's an input. So we can plug it into the function and get F of P or F applied to P, which is a number. Like, you know, it might be seven or it might be 17.3, um, even though I wrote two, okay? Uh, it's just some number. And often we, we can also visualize the output space. In this case, the output is just a real number. That's the only, only time we can take the gradient of a function um, is when the output is a real, real number, and then we'll get a vector field. But in this case, sometimes we visualize the output space as a vertical line, like um, over here, the input was R2, and the output is this vertical line. And so if we looked at the point five down here, um, the point five uh, has, the, you know, every, every input on this circle gets mapped to the point five. So that's the, the contour, the level set in the input space. And here's, you know, it's the pre-image of a point in the output space. This is for a map from R2 to R. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, somewhere in the output space is the number f of p. Okay. Now, let's say we want to decrease the function value. We would like to, you know, maybe f of p was 7. We'd like it to be 4. We'd like it to decrease, or maybe find a minimum. We'd like to minimize loss in gradient in uh, machine learning. So, you know, how should we move? Should we move that way? Should we go over here? Like, you know, if we're standing at P, then F of P is some number, but we want it to be a lower number. So where should we move? Should we go that way? So the gradient answers this question, which is why it's used in machine learning. And so let's see the reason this happens. It comes back to our familiar formula for the dot product. The dot product of two vectors is some positive numbers. These are you know, the length of V and the length of W are always positive numbers. But then the cosine of the angle between them, this could be as big as one and as small as, oh, this is, this is wrong. The x-coordinate should be minus 1. As small as minus 1. Okay, so the cosine could be anywhere between negative 1 and 1. Could be anything between negative 1 and 1. It could be 0 as well. Could be 0. That would be when the vectors are orthogonal. But, um, you know, so this is the key, is that when V and W um, are such that the cosine is 1, that will give the maximal positive number here. But when V and W are pointed in the opposite direction, then the cosine will be negative 1. And that will give the most negative number we could possibly get. When, um, when V and W are somewhere in between, like here, if this is W, then V and W would be a negative number, but not as negative as we could get. And so in order to make this number as negative as we want, we should put W in the opposite direction of V. In order to make this number um, as positive as we want, we should put W in exactly the same direction as v. And so the dot product tells us 
how positive or negative these two vectors will be, okay? And so then when we take the gradient, so if we take the point P and we map it over to the gradient of F at the point P, we get a vector, we get a vector. And that gradient is pointing in some direction. I will draw it. This is the gradient of F at the point P, okay? We've plugged into this gradient map. The gradient is a map. And if we plug in, we get a vector. And we visualize it right there, based at the point P. Now, if we, this, this answers the question then, because the derivative, the derivative, derivative of f at the point P in the direction V, that's, we don't know which direction should we choose, what V? What V should we choose? Well, we look at this and we see that it is the dot product of V with the gradient of f at P. We saw this in an earlier video. So watch that video if you have not seen uh, an earlier video that the derivative is a dot product in this case. When the function has output a real number, then the derivative is a dot product. If the function was like to r2 or to r3, then the derivative is not a dot product. But when it's like this, it is. Oh, well, that means that we have the length of v times the length of the gradient at p. This is a vector. And we take it, we make it a real number, the length of that vector, times the cosine of the angle. And so the answer is now clear from our understanding of this situation of dot product. So I will write it out. The answer is, you know, to move and get maximal increase, like the, to increase the function as quickly as possible, we should move v in the same direction as gradient of f at p. Why? Because then this dot product will be this, the biggest possible positive number, right? And f of p plus v is basically f of p, and then the change. The change is the derivative of f at p and v, and this is the dot product. And so if we want to change the most positive number we can, we should put v and the gradient in the same direction, the same direction so that this cosine is one and we get the biggest positive number, okay? That would be gradient ascent, to ascend, to increase, increase the function value. Okay, that would be moving up in the output space. And then what about gradient descent? Gradient descent, that's for machine learning, well, it's just the other way. Um, to descend means decrease the function value, decrease the output or function value. Those are just two phrases that mean the same thing. Um, you know, we should make this as negative as possible. Make this as negative as possible so that our function value goes from f of p down by a negative amount. Make v dot the gradient of p negative, as negative as we can. So move in direction v Move v equals to the negative of the gradient. Move in the opposite direction of the gradient. So if the gradient is here, is that purple vector over here, is the gradient at p, then we should take v to be like that. Move in the opposite direction. Move somewhere this way. Move the opposite direction. Okay, and so that's it. This is 
how the gradient, you know. So it uses, it's uh, as a summary, it uses our approximation formula because we're going to try to, you know, change the value of the function. Well, that change is the derivative. But in this case, where the function value is a real number, the derivative is the dot product with the gradient. And we have a geometric understanding of dot products based on this theorem here. And so everything we learned so far is coming together here. It's very, very nice. And that, all the things we've learned, will then give the basic algorithm in machine learning, which is if you're at the point P, move in this direction, the negative gradient, because that will give us the most negative number in our linear approximation formula. Excellent. See you next time.